All right, I just got done doing the seat here a little bit of a, while, a little while ago. So I got this one put in there. Uh, let's see. These don't go in very deep on this side. They just about cut through on the other side. Anyway, that's how much of the seat is actually cut through there. You only got about half of this actually goes in the cylinder by the height if you look at it. So right here you only see it's got about half the height there. All this has to be cut off here. We have to redeck this off and cut it because of the angle of the valves. I still got to do this one yet, but I'm going to swap out this one and do this one. See, you know, I already got the uh, angles figured, or the, uh, not the angles, but the, I already got my cutter set. So I don't want to screw around with the cutter set. These are the exhaust we'll have to do here in a little bit. So this is the jig that I made years ago. It's kind of flimsy, but it, it works. Not the best in the world, but it works. So I'm going to swap out this cylinder here. Do another one. Okay, so here's the seat. You can see how it's in there. It's very, very thin on the back side up under here. Very thin, like 15 thou thin. Did not break it out though. It's, it's up under here where my finger is. That's why I limited how far I can put it in because it's very, very tight under there. So I don't know if you can see the little fine little hair lip right there. That's the original cylinder. Didn't leave much left, so but not much support. So it's in there as deep as I can put it, which is way less than I want, and, but I cut way thinner than I wanted to up under here, so yeah, it is what it is. All right, I'm going to put this thing out of my way. I'll put it over here. Ah. We're back for that one. Okay, so I'm going to flip this one over and put this one up in there. So, uh, so you can see how these look stock before you cut them out. So we're going to cut a lot of that material out. All right. Machine's not made to do flatheads, so just like it's not made to do knuckleheads either. So I just, uh, modify stuff and marginally support like it should be to make it work. At some point, I'll have to make some better equipment, but for now, this is working. Kind of. Doesn't take a lot of torque, just a little bit. All right, takes care of that part. Okay. We got to center this thing up. Oh, that sunk way in there. A little bit looser than the other guy. Yeah. It'll work. So we're lining the cylinder up right now, or the valve anyway. So I have to 
twist this to get the angles to come in. So change things a little here. Okay, so you gotta rotate at an angle here until it comes in. Something about there will work. So we have a level right here, so we got that leveled out pretty good. So you can see how much of an angle we had to clock this thing over. So a big gap here, and it's past the edge here, so it's a good an inch difference in height between that side and this side to get the angle to come in right. You can turn it this way, and the angle is pretty close that way. See a little bubble right there. Okay, so it's squared up right now, so when you use your head machine right here, it'll go straight down. I can also tilt this thing if I wanted to, but I don't like tilting it, so I'll just do it over here. No big deal. Okay, so now I gotta do is get our cutter. Where's my other cutter? It's up over here. Yeah. So this is the first one we put in, which roughs it out. So you can see how much material is coming out of there, a lot. A lot of cutting. And then we come by with this one, which is a final size, which just barely cleans it up a little bit. And it basically cuts another 50 thou or so more out, or 60, what the hell was I using? It's about 60, 65 thou cuts, I recall. So you got two different ones here. So that's how we do it. All right. You roughly set a step stop, and you go up a little extra, a lot extra. Don't cut too deep like I did last time almost. Always come back and cut deeper. When you cut too deep, you're screwed. All right, so the first cut, see how you got to put up on this surface here. You can see how high that is right there, and then you can see how much of a gap we get on this side. That's from the angle. So that's what we got to cut through. So, move this over a little bit. We can see better. Maybe. No, I can see better. There we go. And we're actually using a little cutting oil. Normally, I don't use cutting oil, but this job we do. I'm also going to put a little support on here on the table under here. This is a jack. Quill some of the vibration a little bit, hopefully. Seemed to help a little bit, very little. All right, just finger tight, no, no real pressure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. I'm varying my speed up here with a knob up here made a big difference. Go like that, it'll help stop some of the vibration. It likes to chatter. I 
how deep we got to go just to get to zero. Now we're going to start cutting. Thickness we got left. Still got a little material left to go. You see right through here how thick it is right here, right now. Got about 50 thou there, it looks like, so I can take off another 30 thou or so on that. So it gets really thin through there. You can see we have very little depth right here, though, it's not very deep. So. Have to sacrifice one side to get more on the other. Oops. Don't forget that. Slow and easy, so I don't go too much. Gets pretty thin as it is. All right. Get this cleaned up so we can see what we got. Ah. Then, a good stopping point. So you can see how thin that is right there. Very thin. Let's 
So look at that, look how little we got right there. It's almost nothing. All right, so we're gonna stop at that. That is close enough to falling through. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with my pin here so I can see. So I'll go down until it just touches up. We'll change out our cutter here to a new one. This is our bigger one. It's already preset. We're getting about 5,000 press is what it should be getting on it. Quite a bit for cast iron, but it seems to be working all right so far. I haven't broke anything yet. That seems to be what the uh, stock seat's made to go in with, built in. Seat manufacturer dictated that one. Okay. a little bit there playing with it okay so that's that one that's good ah. Okay. I got a big ass seat. Need some room to work here. Back of the ways. Come on, tripod. Got a lot of room in here. Okay. Here on the table over there. Beating tools. Small hammer. It takes force to put this stuff in. Okay, this is my three pound ball peen. My big one. This is the driver. So let's go 
goes against the seat. You hit it with a big hammer right here. It's piloted right here off the pilot, so it goes dead center. So the seat has a no chamfer there, a little bit of chamfer here. This one it goes down, just like that. It's going to hit at an angle. I hurt a little bit. A little bit of press fit lube on it. That way we can make more of a mess. Okay, chamfer down, center in there. Okay, the problem with this is it does not go straight, it's at an angle. See the gap up under here? And see how there's a gap over here because it it's being pushed down this way, so it has to go in, shove in that way, then go straight down. So the chamfer helps a little bit, but just plain force what makes it go in. Hopefully it doesn't cock. If it cocks, you're screwed. So we purposely try to make it so it doesn't cock. One hit, two hit, three, and there it goes in now. Once it started going, see here it went in pretty good. It definitely cocked going in, in the first time. You definitely tell. Okay. Alright, let's see what we got. Where did my flashlight go? Sure, it looks like it's in there where it belongs. Press fit lube is thick and heavy. I gotta get rid of it so you can see. Can't put my nail in there anywhere, so that's a good sign. All right, I think I went in there good. Definitely went in there tight. So you want to make sure there's no no gaps between your seat under here, Oops. under here area. Definitely on the back side where it's thin. So you want to make sure everything's in there good. It appears to be in there pretty good. So I'm go ahead and loosen it up a little bit. I gotta get this out of here. over here see if anything any damage got on this side the lip didn't get broken out that's a big plus so it looks like it's in there pretty good right under there also no gaps or anything so it looks pretty good all right I think we did a good job on that one what are we stuck on right now looks like you're sticking all right when they're pretty nice So now we got to face this off here, make it flush, and then get to do a valve job after that. Okay, next thing I do is do the exhaust seat. So you can see how we braised this all up here before. That's when we put this seat in here. You want to have big gaps all the way around this thing. So now obviously you can see how it doesn't look like we have enough brass in there. There's going to be a few low spots here and there, and didn't get enough in there. When you're welding, you don't know how much you're actually putting in, you kind of guess. Uh, we'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to do the other one here. This one here I'm going to have to set up for everything because I haven't done it yet. Okay. Get this stuff out of our way. These are not resharpenable bits, and I resharpened them. 
<laughs> so let's see how they held up. Looks pretty good. Yep, still look pretty sharp on the edges there. Looks like it held up pretty good. Good, because we're going to have to use this for our final size on this one, I think. Yep. That'll be the one we're going to have to use. This one here only gets used on the intake because it's big. You can see how this one's at the very limits. See, it can go much smaller than what it is. It's right there. I also cheated and sharpened these a little bit too. Or did I? No, I didn't do these ones. That's right. I was going to do them, but I didn't do them. Oh well. Save them for next time. Alright, that one's good to go. Hammer. Out of the way, so it can work. The first thing I do is get the this stop on the center. Not using that stem. So theoretically, it should all be right on center right now. But, uh, the other one is way off. This one be any better. No, this one's not too bad. So you can see how the level is off to one side here. So we need to rotate this a little different down here to make that come in. And this one here, we're not quite centered this way yet. So that's just a matter of tapping it until it gets where it needs to go. to do that on this machine. Back off the tension a little bit, try to get some more out of it. Of course it's not good on your level doing this. No. Alright, I have to do a little help with this. I have to use my both of my hands here. up the whole plate down here and we're going to caulk it until it straightens out. Change a little bit. Good. All right. So 
So now we're on center this way. And this way moved a little bit, so we have to center that up again this way. It moved a little bit, not surprisingly. So everything's centered up now. So we're back on center this way, and we turn it the other way, and we're on center that way. Okay, all that's good. All right, so now we're ready to cut that, right? Not quite. We gotta cut the cutter, gotta make the cutter what we need it to be. We need to do two different cutters. Ah, let's see, I'll grab one of these. Let's see how dull this thing is. Yeah, it looks like it'll live. Yeah, it's kind of... This one's dull too. Looks like it's had a rough life. Appears somebody's been... cutting a lot of sh crap with it. So I guess we need to sharpen these up a little bit. Yeah, that'll take a little work. These are non-movable, non-transferable. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mark this so I can see where these need to be ground at, where you can't grind at them. So I cannot grind where it is held in the holder, otherwise it won't clamp into the holder correctly. So anything above that is his open game. There you go. So I got to hold them and grind them on just this one face by hand because I haven't made a tool for doing it yet. So we're going to do it over here in this grinder over here. A diamond grinder. So this one has a radius grinder right here. And this has a flat one on the other side, on the other side over there. So I'm going to grind a, I'm going to hold them, the bits individually in my hand and then grind them flat. At least attempt to. Side, of course, can't see it from that side. Okay. Thank you. 
Avenue here. That warmed me up a little bit. Okay, so you see I only ground part of the bit here. Just a cutting corner here. It's the only part that cuts that little corner. So got that uh, sharpened up quite a bit. It cut a lot better now. So these used to be about 40 bucks a piece. You had to buy them in a 10 pack. Of course, you only use two per cutter. So I just shaved myself uh, uh, two, uh, four times, 160 bucks. Sharpened four of them. Not bad, huh? A few minutes work. Saved me lots of money. The cut just fine. There you go. No reason not to do it. All right, so now we got to set our cutter. Okay, it's an exhaust valve. Use the exhaust valve seat. So that's the size of the seat. It's a little bit bigger than the valve is. So now we gotta measure this, see what it is. It's going 754 and a half. 754 and a half, same number. Now the seat number. It's got some goofy number that doesn't make any sense. Most of the time seats have markings on them what they are. It doesn't. Well obviously it's supposed to be 750. But so this is gonna have about four and a half five thou press on this one also. Most seats have numbers on them when you buy them. So this one here is a 2000, and then it's got two digits after it. So 2000 is 2 inch OD, 2.000. That's what 2000 means. So this is a 2 inch diameter seat. So theoretically, you put a 2 inch hole in your part and you beat the seat in. The seat has 5000 built in, so it has 2.005. There's an extra half a tenth in there. So this has five, five and a half thou press. So they're pre built in. You can vary it by changing your cutter, but that's how things are usually made. Now these seats are two and or one and three quarter inches in diameter. So they got 54, so these are running about four and a half or so clearance. Press, I mean. These are some kind of a pressed metal looking thing or casted seat. And they're not, they don't look like they're pressed metal. I think they're just cast in there, it's not machined on the inside. So, cheaper seats, I guess. So, I want to leave myself about 50 to 60 thou for the final cut. Let the cutter go. Minimum cut on this cutter is 68, so we're good. We're going to cut this one for the 750 size. I'd rather have at least five thou press on this. If we got five on the intakes, we have at least five on the exhaust. So we're gonna cut this down to 749. 
What are we at right now? Right now we're at 875, see? Okay, over here you see some micrometer, so if you read it, it tells you out, so there's 800 right there, so you get down to 800. One turn is 50, so that's 750. I want a half a thou less than that, so I knock it down half a thou. That should give me a full 5 thou press. Loosen up your insert, push it against the setting fixture, and then tighten it up. Then you measure it to see what it really is. It always cuts one to two thou. It always measures one to two thou under what you set it at. Kind of a built-in thing, I guess. This one's 47. It's three thou under. I come back and reset this. See where it's set at. So even though I set this at a half a thou under, it's actually coming in at 47 and a half there. I don't know if you can read that. Does that help or hurt? I don't know. So this is not being very accurate like it usually is. So I'm going to put this at 750 right on the money, reset this, and then see if it will get the number I want. It didn't give me the number I wanted, so i got to play with it. Let's see what we got. Okay, it's still cutting. It's losing about a thou when I tighten it, so I'll just kick it up a little higher back and see what we got. At that time it came right on the money 750 which I don't want. Go back and reset it. Okay, that looks pretty good on that one. Figures I cut right on the money that time. There we go. Okay, that time it's coming right on where I want it. <clears throat> it's right on 749 there. I don't know if you can read it. Doesn't put much pressure on very light pressure. Yeah, I want deeper. <laughs> Every time you push down, it goes deeper, so. Now I gotta reset it. Damn. Probably wore away the edge. <laughs> or chipped it. See what number we got this time. Okay, before we're 47. I had 48 there, just got with it. 47 and a half. It's definitely measuring good over there. I'm going to get 47 and a half here. Oh, I was trying to get 49 and a half. That's right. I thought I was getting 50. So it's 2,000 under. That's what it's measuring. So, oh, well. Okay, that's our final. Okay, now this one here, we want to give about 50 or 60 under that. So you go one full turn down, plus a little extra. That'll be 60. This one's just a clearance cut, so it doesn't really matter exact or not. Okay. See this one's pretty big. See how far the inserts are out of the cutter. So it should be under 750. 
about 690 probably. Okay, we're coming about 6088. That's close to 690. Okay, so I got these set. Got my two cutters there. I'm gonna go back over here and do some cutting. Now we're gonna do the same thing we just did before, except now we're doing a smaller size. Second one. All this work just repeats. Okay, so this one needs a small one. Let's see what we got. Okay, we gotta move this in further, obviously. These seats are a lot taller, but we're going to be cutting most of it off again. Yeah, I'll be happy if I got that much out of that thing. Okay, initial cut. Okay, let's go see what we got here. So we're going to get steel, cast iron. I forgot to put my stand under here. Just cutting away the uh, brass. I'm just starting to get to the cast iron under there. Yeah, still, just starting to hit the cast iron. It's got a lot of brass on this side because this side's lower than that side over here. So keep cutting on it. Let's see what we get. We don't know.
see what it looks like. Figure how much more we can cut. Of course, now we're on the blind side. Still pretty thick. Got a lot more material we can take out. Spring in there. I think we're going to be cutting through this top of the port any like we do on the other side. It doesn't look very strong on this side at all. Hmm. Kind of guess how deep you're going. And I got a lot more to go, but I don't want to do too much. Three eighty already. Yeah, we're getting in there. So you see, Tony, uh, four thirty eight. We're at three eighty. So we got another twenty thou. More we can go deeper. Still be safe. Get much more into that. We're going to be uh, pushing it a little bit too much. Come back, give a little bit more. Adjusting our stop right here. much parent material we're cutting into over here. Got a lot of brass, not much original material. Over here not much better. A lot of filler. Okay, now we we'll go to a bigger diameter seat, but we're gonna get a lot more area. The other option is to put a bigger put a bigger diameter seat in there. I don't really want to do that just yet. Okay, so I'm gonna try our actual real cutter we're going to use. deeper maybe all right that 
that's about it I think. filler brass material. Parent material in there, obviously. Three ninety seven. So we got thirty. So theoretically, we got another thirty thou. Theoretically. See the actual real material. So you got the brass here. That doesn't really do anything except cosmetic. It makes the airflow better. Doesn't help us for what we're doing. It's all undercut under here anyway. It's not 100% welded. So the actual seat area is only from here to here. Is when it's holding that seat in there. Over here, it looks like the weld's a lot better. But still, there's not a lot of material there. Inside over here, same thing toward the seat. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Looks like we can go down another 20th hour or so and uh, go ahead and give it a little extra. Intake can get away with stuff, the exhaust, you wanna make sure you got it. So much you can get in there without weakening anything. Now, a bigger down the seat would definitely help on this a little bit. I'd rather really not put a bigger seat in there if I can avoid it. Push it too far.
Ooh. at 435 that time. See, it's only 38, so that should be almost flush. That means we're going to bury that whole seat into the head. Okay, a little goop in there. Magic goop. Crappy pilot in there. Okay, I'm gonna put the seat in there. I gotta find a driver to use. Preferably one that won't hit anything else. That might hit something else. I don't want to use that one. That one will work. This one's smaller in diameter, so it'll clear everything. Okay, I'm gonna beat this thing in there just like the other one. See what happens. Doesn't have big as, as much chamfer to this one as the other one did. I'm gonna hold it with my thumb to help a little bit. There it goes. I had to roll that whole edge in there with a the copper or brass is. Tools a little. All right, let's see what we got. Ah. We definitely are buried in there all the way. Yeah, that's some sticky ass stuff. Alright, let's see what we got here. Can't really see the underneath part. Looks like it's in there from what I can see though. Looks like it's in there pretty good. You can see how it's flush right here. See, I couldn't bury the intake in that far. See, it's only got within that much of an edge. Which is actually a lot deeper, I think, the other head had. <laughs> well, it looks pretty good. Would help. All right, spin this around. Let's see if we can see it in this direction here. Not really. Camera will focus in on the inside in there. All right, let's see if I can see. Looks like it's sitting flush. <clears throat> Everything I can see looks good. Yep. Looks good to me. Alright, I'm happy with that one. <clears throat> I think it turned out pretty good. So it's, it's almost dead flush right there. So when we mill this off, there's not going to be much sticking up, that's for sure. I didn't know we had this one so close. That's a lot better than the last one. The other one was nowhere near that deep. See how much more of this one here was sticking up right here. Limited by the underneath part. 
Yeah, this one here is a little bit more down, I think. Oh well. All right, I'm gonna swap out this cylinder. I'm gonna put the other one in there. We'll come back in a few minutes. All right, we're just about done with this one here. It's getting really, really thin up under here, so I'm not sure if I want to keep going deep or not. I'd like to go another 30 or so more down, but we'll see. But uh, I gotta go up to my next cutter now. So that was the rough size. So this is the final size. So we'll go ahead and put this one in. See what it looks like. We'll make a decision if we want to go deeper or not. I like we're in the seat in their full depth like we did last time. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll see. Might not, might not be enough room. Breaking off the little piece of brass that are in there. Yes. Only 380 down. I'd rather have more seat in there than what I got. Thin area is going to go. I think I'm going to cut through that. Not sure. Yeah. 
It's almost the same depth right here on the side. Yeah. Junk. I want to cut deeper. See, it's half brass and half iron. It's a toss up. Yeah, I think I need to go down deeper. That brass is more cosmetic than real world, so. Need to go deeper. More holding power. Lose a lip or lose a lip. Just how it's going to be. To get rid of that chatter, though. So it's hard to tell where you're at. Four twenty. Maybe a little bit more. Chattering. Different. Okay, let's see what we got now. And about 427, 4.30. 4.21. Twenty still. Four twenty-five. So what? Thirty-eight. Yeah, thirty-eight. Probably another ten more thou maybe down. I think it's worth it. Thank you. 
sure how much that was, but a little bit. Maybe more I wanted to go. Who knows? Uh, it says 438 on that one. Check, so I think we're right where we want to be. About flush. About the same we did on the first one. Okay, I'm good with that. Clean this mess up here a little bit. See if the seal going in the hole. Make sure you clean your tools when you're done. Keeps things from getting to be a big mess. Three sharpened uh, cutters seem to be working pretty good. We'll find out if it cut on a size though when we go to beat it in. Okay. Now this one is more even because the, the uh, Brass is all cut away or not filled in like the other seat was. It'll be almost even. It's basically giving you a big chamfer going in. See how the brass is not filled in right through here? So that'll make the seat start a lot easier, hopefully. The only disadvantage is it's really, really thin right here, so this, as long as this doesn't go underneath, we'll be fine. If it goes underneath, we're screwed. That would be a big problem. Make sure you pull that all the way. Okay, camera way out of my way a little bit, so I got some room to work. Got a room to swing a hammer, right? Okay, there's our seat. The driver. This seat has very little chamfer on it. Yeah, looks like this one here is the one it goes in on. pilot in there. No pilot, no driving the hole very good. Push on that side. shifts the angle once it squares up and goes in. Makes a big turn. Okay. Yeah, kind of a nasty job there. Nowhere near enough brass on this one. Leaves the seat sticking up way high in the air when I don't like. Looks like the brass stayed put. Looks like it's in there as far as I can tell. Pretty well hidden. Here's what matters right here. Looks like it's sitting all the way down as far as I can tell. You can see how there's not any brass right in here so the seat's all exposed which is bad. That's not going to ever clean up. You need a lot more brass in there when I put in there. So this one here, I didn't, I didn't get enough in there. Yeah, pretty low. I thought I had enough, but the seat was 
pretty low in the head, so you got what you got to work with. It looks like it's in there pretty good. I don't see any metal underneath the edge. It's really thin on that side. Probably can't see it though. You can see a little bit right through there. Right there you can kind of see. Looks like it's up in there pretty good. Alright. So I think that's going to work. Yeah, I really don't like how that's all open through there, but... Man, that's got a hole like crazy right through there. That's got a massive hole. Oh well. Loss of compression. <laughs> It'll fill it full of carbon, right? Alright, that's it for this set.